Hello everyone, welcome to my Transformer series. Today we're going to talk about feedforward network. Let's dive into it. So first of all, why name it feedforward? So this concept is actually comparing to another concept, which is recurrent network. Before Transformer, recurrent network is mainly used in, in machine translation, text recognition, etc. And there's a reason for that. So because recurrent neural network can process information in loops. So this allow information from previous steps from the past to be fed back into the network. So this is great for sequential data because it holds some memory. Uh, so text recognition, machine translation, this, is, this model works perfectly. And you must have heard of LSTM, it's variants of this RNN. So in the contrast, we have feed forward neural network. So in this case, the information flows in one single direction with no circle. So this is good for task that doesn't require memory of past data, say image recognition. Of course, this is before transformer. As we have gone through already, transformer is pretty creative in doing a self attention and then position embedding to make sure we can have the whole context, but still do it, do it in the parallel instead of going through sequential. So this is the feed forward architecture. It's the most simple deep neural network you're going to see. So it has input layer, it has output layer, and it has one or multiple hidden layers. So the first layer is input, the last layer is output, and everything in between is hidden layers. Let's take a look at feedforward net network inside transformer. So inside transformer, you can see there's two blue blocks that is feed forward and it all followed by a add and norm. Today, we're also going to talk briefly about add and norm. First of all, let's take a look at, take a look at the basics. The formula of feed forward network is, is this. So as you can see, there's a max zero uh, X W1 plus B1 and then W2 plus B2. So this is basically two linear transformation. The first one is X W1 plus B1. The next one is W2, this whole blocks plus B2. So there are two linear transformation with a ReLU activation function in between. So what is a ReLU uh, activation function? So it is a nonlinear activation function used in neural network. ReLU x equals to max zero and x. So the, the larger value between x, zero and x. So this is the ReLU part. And it's happening in between the two linear transformations. So the intuition between these formula is, within this formula is, again, thanks Gemini, you, you made this part really easy. So the first one is nonlinearity. The first fully connected layer projects the input to a higher dimension space. So this allows the network to learn more complex relationship. And then it goes through the activation function. So this is the part where it applies the long nonlinear complex relationships. And then we go through the dimensionality reduction. It happens in the second fully connected layer. So it projects the data back to its original dimensionality, ensure compatibility with the next layer. So after these two, it actually learns a lot more, not only because of we expand the dimension in the first connected layer, more importantly, ReLU actually makes sure it has nonlinear, it learns nonlinear relationship. Remember in our attention block, everything is linear. So this is the place we learn nonlinear relationships. And then it also have the advantage of parallel processing. So since each position in a sequence is processed separately through the FFN, the computation can actually be parallelized efficiently. So this is not in the graph, but it's a pretty standard exercise that is applying dropout. Dropout is a regularization technique I use to prevent overfitting, which is very common in machine learning by randomly dropping out that is to set the values to set the neurons to zeros, a certain percentage of neurons during training. So this forced the network to learn more robust features 
and not rely too heavily on any single neuron. So this will also imp improve the ability to generalize to new data. So the advantage is basically covered in the um, summarization, in the summary. So it reduced overfitting. This it reduced overfitting by preventing neurons from co-adapting too much. And then it also improved generalization. It forced the network to learn features that are not dependent on any specific neurons. After it go through this, we usually have dropout. And then there comes the add and norm. So this is not in the blue block, but this is this follows the blue block. Add and norm means that the first one is add, it means residual connection. This is also a common practice in deep learning. So before I talk about this, you can take a look at the graph on the right hand side. X is, let's say, some input, and some of it is going to go through the deep neural network, including ReLU, and then it's going to get the, get the FX, which is the, the gradients. And then instead of passing the gradients directly through the, the, the next layer, it also adds its own function. It also adds its own, like identity function is just a fancy way of saying itself. So this actually helps a lot uh, in, in mitigating the vanishing gradients problem. The goal is to, as I said, mitigate the vanishing gradient problem for deep neural networks. So this happens originally from ResNet, and now it's used more in deep neural networks, say Transformer. So this enables the deeper architecture by, of course, resolving the vanishing gradient problem, that which is more serious as layers increase. So how it does is it allows gradient to bypass immediate layers, bypass, and adding identity function with the reweighted values. So this is the feed forward, this is the add and norm, and as you can see, the identity function goes directly through add and norm and, uh, and, and also oh, some of it go through the feed forward, and then we add in this, in this place. So we, we have went through the add part, and then let's talk about the norm. So the norm usually in transformer or sequential like LLMs, it refers to layer normalization. So layer normalization is a technique uh, that helps stabilize and accelerate training by normalizing the inputs to each layer. So it ensures the model process information consistently regardless of the input scale or distribution. I know it doesn't mean a lot, but we can use next episode to talk about layer normalization. And I want to also compare with other normalization. Thank you, everyone. Hope you like this video. If you do, please subscribe, comment, and like.